Greetings and thank you for clicking on the video. It's Smith in the building and we're still looking at construction drawings and learning how to navigate through them. In this video we're going to be uh, continuing to look at what's called the general sheets and part of the general sheets we already looked at the cover sheet and the phasing plan. In this video we're going to talk about the code study plans and you may also see this referred to as the building code summary or uh, something related to the building code because this is this is basically what this sheet is about now when I say building code I'm talking about things like uh, occupancy loads what is the maximum amount of people that can be in any given space of the building uh, the egresses which is uh, dealing with the exits these are designated by building codes so um, let's get into this we're going to scroll through this code review and I'll hit some hot points. Now a lot of this stuff we already saw on previous sheets. There's the building area again. Uh, but I will point out that uh, under this building use and construction classifications, this is going to list out the type of building uh, that's being built here as well as give the uh, code, the international building code uh, version that is applied to this project this is the fire code that's applied to this project as well so here you can see there's already some restrictions uh, this is the proposed type of building so they want to build a building uh, that goes by these codes uh, but they are restricted um, by the building allowable height at three stories um, and a 48 foot maximum now looking at occupancy loads and egress requirements, this is basically like what I was saying uh, just a few seconds ago. Let's take the gym for instance. Okay, so this lists out the size of the gym and now you have a square foot per person. So that means that each person, is, so if the gym was loaded to the complete max, each person should have seven feet or set seven square feet around them. So that's the occupancy load there uh, in, in a space of 5,929. The occupancy load for people is 849 people. The egress width required means that uh, any egress, any hallways leading to an exit need to be at least 172 inches wide in order to fit, you know, the amount of people through there. Now the egress width provided, meaning what was designed for this building, is 100 more inches, 272 inches. Uh, the number of exits required in the gym, we're still talking about the gym, that's based off of the occupancy load and the area. There's three exits that are required and they provided three. So it's, it's the same as you go through and you look at the fire protection system requirements, you look at the interior finish requirements. All of these are listing out codes and tables for uh, this building to adhere to in order to be within the code. So it even talks about travel distance to exits. I'll show you that in a second, but that is basically mean how far does someone have to travel if they're in a particular corner of the building that's furthest away from an exit, how close is the nearest exit and the minimum corridor requirement panic hardware is um, like when you're exiting a building normally and you have to push to exit that's called panic hardware and so and this building is telling you that all doors serving more than 50 people and at smoke barrier doors have to have that panic hardware so we're not going to go through all of these i've explained a few you can uh, kind of do your own reading and um, you can kind of get the point of what I was trying to say. Now I do want to look at the symbol key here because uh, you know this is important to know. So some of these things that we saw up there like the required width um, and the actual width when we were talking about the egresses, uh, these are all encompassed in these symbols. So uh, in this symbol you've got the uh, allowable number of occupancy now remember like in the gym there was uh, eight nine eight hundred fifty whatever it was uh, that number was the allowable number of occupancy in the gym so that is where that number is and then you have the actual number of occupancy you want to pay close attention to anywhere where you see uh, dashed lines you want to pay attention 
to the way that they're dashed, the patterns, actually mean something. You see this dash drawn around a room or a certain area, that means that that area needs to withhold a two hour rating. So that's going to uh, mean that it's gonna have uh, different uh, wall types. Uh, there's gonna be different kind of sealant applied at openings. There's going to be uh, even different doors. And so all that's to take, it, all of that should be taken into consideration. Um, so with that, you have uh, your dashed lines for one hour rated uh, area a smoke partition area so uh, for instance if you have a wall uh, let's say like in a hotel or something you may have a smoke partition in a hotel to separate uh, certain rooms areas uh, that way you know an apartment may also have this like a, a demising wall may have this to uh, isolate you know a, a situation where there may be smoke in an area and so they kind of follow the same sort of patterning, pat patterning, 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 pattern. Let's just call it. They follow the same kind of patterns for ceilings. So let's move on. Now these charts up here give somewhat of the same information uh, that we've seen in similar formats. So I want to more so focus on some of the things that you see written on the plans. So let's take a look at, at one of the things that we saw when we were looking at the code review. It said something about max travel distance. So in this corner, if you were standing in this corner and there was a situation where you needed to get to the exit, let's say a fire, uh, part of the code review ensures that you don't have to travel uh, very far to get to the nearest exit. So the max travel distance is 125 feet and eight inches, meaning that all of this right here adds up to when you get into the door, uh, you would be at 125, you would have gone 125 feet and eight inches. So that's what that means. Now here you see a two hour rated curtain wall system. And we see that this is the same pattern that we saw below. So what this is basically saying is that uh, the curtain wall system, meaning you know it's a window wall system, uh, has to have certain fire rated properties applied to it. Um, the sealant that's used around it needs to also be fire rated. It needs to hold up uh, for two hours in the case of a fire. And so you can kind of follow and see which areas are getting those ratings. You'll notice it in stairs, so right here, now this is most stairs would normally have a one or two hour rated rating applied with them. And so all of these bubbles here with numbers in them, that is your maximum occupancy. That's the maximum amount of people that can be within certain areas. These classrooms are seeming to hold anywhere from 40 to 50 people. And right above that is the square footage for each one of the given areas. I want to point out these boxes here that call out a UL assembly. Those of you who don't know uh, what a UL assembly is, uh, well, UL is a, uh, and actually it's a, a company, a global company um, that has been around for hundreds of years. And it was founded under the name of the Underwriters Electrical Bureau. But what they basically do is they design different assemblies uh, for walls and floors and different systems that ensure and that have been tested uh, to withstand uh, what whatever they claim to to uh, withstand. In this case, it's a two hour rating on a concrete wall. So if we were to look up UL design number U930, it should have uh, a similar detail for what we're able to find in these plans concerning building a concrete bearing wall that can hold a two hour rating. And so you see uh, this one here, design number U469, is a one hour ceiling rate assembly. And look at where some of these some of these occur so that it makes sense for you. This is in an electrical room. Both of these are in an electrical room. 
And so that's pretty typical in these types of rooms. You can see that uh, they're completely fire rated for walls and ceilings. But I don't want to beat a dead horse. I think we've gotten into pretty much enough information on this code study plan. So lock it in and I'll see you on the next video.